Older patients with classical Hodgkin lymphoma are often defined as patients aged 60 years or over at time of diagnosis. They have a less favorable outcome compared to younger patients, and we have yet to establish a golden standard in the management of these patients. So the prevalence of comorbidities and frailty increase with age, and these patients are also more susceptible to toxic effects of treatments, such as infections or bleomycin-induced lung toxicity. All of these factors can hamper the delivery of effective treatment, which can result in treatment failure or relapse. In recent years, more studies have been conducted in older patients, and new agents in combination with chemotherapy have been introduced, which is very promising. But we still don't know what chemotherapy backbone is optimal in this setting. So <clears throat> the aim of our study was to evaluate the chemotherapy regimens used to treat older patients with newly diagnosed classical Hodgkin lymphoma in Sweden, Denmark, and Norway between the years 2000 and 2021. It's a retrospective population and registry-based study, including patients aged 60 years and over, all stages who received first-line chemotherapy with curative intent. Patients were identified and data collected from National Lymphoma Registry in each country, as well as from patient records. We then group patients according to stage and first-line chemotherapy regimen received. So we included a total of 1,554 patients with a median age of 70 years. 671 of these patients received ABVD, 122 patients received AVD, 465 patients received SHOP, and 296 patients received other chemotherapy. 59% of patients were male, and the majority presented with advanced stage disease. The ABVD group were younger, with a median age of 66 years. They had better performance status, more often presented with limited stage disease compared to the other three groups. The AVD, SHOP, and other group were more homogeneous with a median age of 74 years for AVD and 73 years for the SHOP and other group. They also had a higher performance status and more often presented with advanced stage disease. Now, this was quite interesting when we then looked at the five-year overall survival there was no significant difference between the ABVD and AVD group, irrespective of stage. But patients who received shock or other chemotherapy had a significantly lower overall survival. For patients with limited stage disease, overall survival at five years was 85% in the ABVD group, 94% in the AVD group, 64% <clears throat> in the shock group, and 48% in the group receiving other chemotherapy. Uh, for advanced stage patients, overall survival was 63% in the ABVD group, 64% in the AVD group, 46% in the SHOP group, and 39 in the group receiving other chemotherapy. We saw similar results in both the univariable and multivariable Cox regression analysis, where we found no significant difference between the ABVD and AVD group, again, irrespective of stage nor could we see a significant difference between the SHOP and ABVD group in limited stage patients. But keeping in mind, these patients in general have a more favorable prognosis and the majority also received radiotherapy, which may have compensated for the lower efficacy of SHOP in this setting. Patients who received other chemotherapy had a significantly higher risk for death compared to the ABVD group across all stages. <clears throat> so, to summarize, AVD seems at least equal to ABVD with respect to overall survival, superior to SHOP and the group receiving other chemotherapy. And this is despite the fact that the AVD group was older and more frail compared to the ABVD group. This is promising since omitting bleomycin is desirable to avoid toxicity that may have a negative impact on outcome. And we think that AVD should be considered as chemotherapeutic backbone in prospective studies with novel drugs in older classical Hodgkin lymphoma patients.